Hello everyone. I am Om Krishna Gupta. I am assistant professor uh, in electronics and communication engineering department in uh, Ajay Kumar Garg Engineering College, Ghaziabad. Uh, this is lecture three of the subject analog circuits, and uh, in this lecture, I am going to discuss the basics of oscillators. Contents are uh, introduction to oscillator, basic principle of oscillator, and classification of oscillator. So. Firstly, we need to understand that uh, what is oscillator and uh, why we need oscillators, what, what is the relevance of oscillator. So, oscillator is, a, is an electronic device which is used to generate a signal of a particular frequency. For example, it can generate a sine wave, it can generate a square wave, it can generate a triangular wave. Like in the laboratory, you people had seen uh, the function generator. So, with the help of that uh, function generator, you can generate sine wave, square wave, triangular wave of a particular frequency. That is also an oscillator. That function generator is basically the oscillator. So, in many applications, like in communication systems, you need carrier signal. That carrier signal is a sine wave. Uh, so, we need uh, this sine wave. So, we need to generate that sine wave, that carrier wave. And we generate the sine wave, carrier wave with the help of oscillator. Also in digital electronics, uh, we apply the clock signal to the sequential circuits and that clock signal is uh, basically a square wave, it is a pulse signal, right. There we require oscillators. In microprocessor, in microcontrollers, we use a special type of oscillators called a crystal oscillator uh, that is used to generate a signal of a fixed frequency. So, with the help of crystal oscillator, we can generate a single frequency. So, the point is that uh, we need oscillators in different applications like uh, I have mentioned in communication systems, uh, digital systems and uh, microprocessor, microcontrollers, etc. Right? So, basically, uh, this oscillator, it works on the principle of positive feedback. So, as far as feedback is uh, concerned that feedback is of two types the first one is positive feedback and the second one is negative feedback negative feedback is used in uh, amplifiers positive feedback is used in oscillators negative feedback is required in amplifiers because uh, we need stability we need a stable amplifier to stabilize that amplifier we we use negative feedback but oscillators utilizes positive feedback. So, I have already mentioned uh, this first point uh, that is the definition of oscillator. It is a device which is used to generate a signal of a desired frequency. Like in the laboratory, you can just vary the frequency of that sine wave, square wave and triangular wave, right. So, we, we, we can tune the frequency also, we can vary the frequency also, but in crystal oscillator, uh, that crystal oscillator, it generates a fixed frequency, but with the help of sine wave generators, square wave generators, we can uh, vary the frequency of those signals uh, with the help of uh, register capacitors, right, that uh, you will see. Now, see, this oscillator, it uh, works on the principle of uh, positive feedback and uh, the special thing about the oscillator is, it does not require an input signal. So, oscillator is the device in electronics which does not require any input signal and it generates output without any input signal, right. So, that I will discuss that how oscillators generate output without any input, fine. So, as far as, as far as principle of oscillation, principle of oscillator is concerned. Basically, oscillators utilize positive feedback, right? And for positive feedback system, we can calculate the voltage gain, right? And for positive feedback system, when we calculate the voltage gain, AF, that is the gain with feedback, that is equal to A upon 1 minus A beta, A upon 1 minus A beta, right? Like for negative feedback system, 
we get this AF is equal to A upon 1 plus A beta. For negative feedback, we get A upon 1 plus A beta. But for positive feedback, we get A upon 1 minus A beta. So, in this context, there is a criteria called uh, Bach Hussein criteria. So, as per Bach Hussein criteria, a circuit can generate oscillations if it satisfies two conditions. The first condition is mod A beta is equal to 1. Mod A beta is equal to 1. This A beta is called loop gain. A beta is called loop gain. Where A is gain without feedback, beta is feedback factor and uh, this AF is the gain with feedback. That gain with feedback is called closed loop gain. Gain without feedback is called open loop gain. So, you can see that if A beta is 1, it means that uh, A will be infinite. It means that for a 0 input signal, we get the output. But we need to understand that how oscillators generate the output signal without giving any input, right? So, as per Bach Hussein criteria, the mod A beta, it should be equal to 1. That is the first condition. And the another condition is the total phase shift around the loop should be 0 degree or 360 degree. That is the mandatory requirement for oscillations. The reason is that if the total phase shift around the loop is uh, 0 degree or 360 degree, it means that the both the signals, it will be in phase. And in positive feedback, two signals are added. Like in negative feedback, two signals are subtracted. In positive feedback, two signals are added. The output signal goes to the feedback and it is added to the input signal. So, two signals can only be added if they are in phase. So, in uh, oscillators, uh, since we are uh, using positive feedback, so to, uh, to make positive feedback, to ensure that the positive feedback is there in the circuit, for that it is important that the total phase shift around the loop should be 0 degree or 360 degree. The total phase shift around the loop means there are two main uh, components, main modules in uh, any oscillator. The first one is amplifier. The first one is amplifier. And the second one is feedback network. So, in any oscillators, these are the two main modules, amplifier and feedback network. This amplifier, it can be common emitter amplifier, common source amplifier or you can use operational amplifier also, right. That amplifier, it gives some phase, it may give uh, 0 degree phase shift, it may give 180 degree phase shift depending upon the type of amplifier. For example, if the amplifier is inverting, then the inverting amplifier will give 180 degree phase shift. If it is non-inverting, then it will not give any phase shift. For example, common emitter, common source amplifiers are the inverting amplifiers because the voltage gain of common emitter and common source are negative. If the voltage gain is negative, it means that the output is 180 degree out of phase with input. Similarly, in operational amplifier also, we can uh, design inverting amplifier as well as non-inverting amplifier with the help of op amp. So, the point is that some phase shift is provided by the amplifier depending upon the type of amplifier, right. And the phase shift provided by the amplifier and the phase shift provided by the feedback network, the addition of both the phase shifts, it should be 0 degree or 360 degree. For example, if the amplifier is the inverting amplifier, if it is inverting amplifier, then this inverting amplifier will provide 180 degree phase shift and the total phase shift require, required is 360. So, it means that the feedback network should be designed in such a way that the feedback network should provide another 180 degree phase shift by which 180 plus 180 it will become 360. So, the total phase shift will become 360, right. Similarly, if the amplifier is non-inverting, then in that case, the phase shift provided by non-inverting amplifier is 0 degree, means no phase shift. It means that 
the feedback network should be such that it should not provide any phase shift. So, 0 degree plus 0 degree will be equal to 0 degree. So, it is very important to understand that how much phase is provided by the amplifier and according to that we can set the phase shift of the feedback network or vice versa is also true. Fine. So, it is very important that the total phase shift around the loop should be 0 degree or 360 degree in order to ensure that there is positive feedback in the circuit. So, Barkusen criteria states that the first condition is the loop gain should be unity that is 1 and the total phase shift around the loop should be 0 degree or 360 degree. Now, coming to the multi vibrators, now you will see that how multi vibrator is related to oscillator till now I have just discussed that uh, what is oscillator and uh, what uh, what are the conditions for oscillation for that uh, there is a Bach Hussein criteria and one important thing there is no input signal applied at the oscillator but it gives the output that I will discuss further. Multi vibrators are the circuit which can uh, which can have more than one states, right? The output state of uh, the multi vibrator it can change from low to high, high to low, right? So basically, multi vibrators are of three types: a stable multi vibrator, mono stable multi vibrator, and bi stable multi vibrator. As the name suggests, a stable multi vibrator is the multi vibrator which is having no stable state, which is having no stable state. No stable state means the output of a stable multi vibrator, it will keep switching from low to high, high to low, low to high, high to low. So, a stable multi vibrator, we can say that it is a kind of a square wave generator, or we can say that a square wave generator is also called a stable multi vibrator. So, a stable multi vibrator, it is an oscillator. So, in a stable multi vibrator, we does not uh, we do not give any input, we do not give any input to the stable multi vibrator since it is an oscillator and it generates a pulse waveform and the frequency of that pulse waveform is square waveform we can adjust by changing the values of resistor and capacitor. In mono stable multi vibrator there is one stable state, there is one stable state, mono means one. So, in mono stable multi vibrator one state is stable. For example, if the logic 0 state is stable, so there is a trigger pulse in mono stable multi vibrator. When that trigger pulse is applied to the mono stable multi vibrator, the output of the mono stable multi vibrator it switches from low to high and it remains in high state for a particular time period t and after that it comes back to its original state that is logic 0. So, basically in this the logic 0 state is the stable state. But logic 1 state is not the stable state. Reason is when we are not applying any trigger pulse, then the output will remain in logic 0 state. The output changes its state only when there is a trigger pulse applied at the mono stable multi vibrator, right? And when it changes its state's state from 0 to 1, so it remains in logic 1 state for a particular time period t, and after that it comes back to logic 0 state. Right. So, this mono stable multi vibrator is used to generate a pulse of a particular duration. As far as bi stable multi vibrator is concerned, bi means 2. This multi vibrator it is having 2 stable states, and uh, the example of uh, bi stable multi vibrators are flip flops that uh, you had studied in digital system design. Flip flops are called bi stable multi vibrator because it is having 2 output states, 2 stable states. Uh, 0 and 1 and the output changes its state only when there is a clock pulse, right. So, as far as oscillators are concerned, here we will be concentrating only on our stable multi vibrator since it is a oscillator, fine. Now, the basic principle of sinusoidal oscillator as I have already mentioned that it utilizes positive feedback. Now, you can calculate the voltage gain of uh, this positive feedback system and after the calculation we will get a f is equal to a upon 1 minus a beta, right. Like we had uh, calculated in for the negative feedback system, for negative feedback system uh, the equation of a f uh, is uh, a upon 1 plus a beta, but for positive feedback 
it is a upon 1 minus a beta right now coming to the Barkhausen criteria that is the mandatory requirement to generate the oscillations this thing I have already uh, discussed uh, the first criteria is magnitude of the product of open loop gain and the feedback factor is unity it means that mod a beta is equal to 1 and the second one is total phase shift around the loop should be 0 degree or 360 degree because when the total phase shift is 0 degree or 360 degree only then positive feedback is formed and that is the requirement for oscillation. So, this Barkhausen criteria is very important because if the circuit is to be uh, act as an oscillator then uh, the Barkhausen criteria should satisfy. Now, coming to the different cases of uh, loop gain, actually there are three cases of uh, loop gain, loop gain that is mod a beta. So, the first case is when mod a beta is equal to 1 mod a beta is equal to 1 it means that we will get sustained oscillations sustained oscillations sustained oscillations means we will get the oscillations of constant amplitude fine and the second case is when mod a beta is greater than 1 when mod a beta is greater than 1 then we get growing oscillations growing oscillations growing oscillations means the amplitude of the sine wave will keep increasing right and the third case is loop gain mod a beta is less than 1 mod a beta less than 1 in this case we get decaying oscillations we get decaying oscillations decaying oscillations means the amplitude of the signal will be decaying fine so these are the three cases now you can understand that uh, if you want a sine wave in the cro so which kind of wave we want sustained oscillation growing oscillation or decaying oscillation of course we want the first case sustained oscillations that's why mod a beta should be equal to 1 but there is one thing when we design any oscillator circuit at the starting we put mod a beta greater than 1 slightly greater than 1 it is very important to start the oscillation and after that once the oscillations are started then after that the circuit adjusts itself to mod a beta equal to 1 so to start the oscillation the condition is mod a beta greater than 1 and for sustained oscillations mod a beta should be equal to 1 but of course we want sustained oscillation but at the starting we need to set mod a beta greater than 1 the reason is that reason you can understand with this topic that is how oscillator produces output without input because oscillator is a circuit in which we are not applying any input but we are getting the output how is it possible that without applying any input we get the output the reason is that when we design any circuit any electronic circuit there is some noise present and that noise is generated that noise voltage is there because at room temperature the electrons move randomly and due to the random motion of electron a voltage is generated that is called noise voltage so when we design any circuit there will be noise and this noise the magnitude of this noise is very less it may be in microvolt nanovolts it is very less and that amplifier amplifies this noise signal and after amplification we get the amplified noise at the output after that uh, it will be added to the input and the uh, magnitude of that uh, output signal will keep increasing so the point is that in amplifier we had discussed that uh, noise is very undesired we want the rejection of noise for for that we use differential amplifier but in oscillator because of this noise the circuit generates output because we are not giving any input fine so how oscillator produces output without input the answer is because of the noise present in the circuit now you can understand that this noise whose magnitude is very less in uh, microvolt nanovolt so at the starting 
why mod a beta should be greater than 1 because for mod a beta greater than 1 we will get growing oscillations and we we want this mod a beta greater than 1 at the starting to start the oscillation because the magnitude of the noise is very less starting we need to push that noise right and after that the circuit adjusts itself to mod a beta equal to 1 mod a beta equal to 1 means we will get sustained oscillations so from here we can see that for this portion mod a beta greater than 1 but for this portion mod a beta is equal to 1 right so i repeat to start the oscillation the condition is mod a beta greater than 1 but for sustained oscillation mod a beta equal to 1 but we want sustained oscillation we want sustained oscillation and bach husein criteria states that mod a beta should equal to 1 now coming to the classification of uh, oscillators oscillators are classified on the basis of different parameters so the first two basis is based on output waveform. So based on output waveform, there are two types of oscillators. The first one is a sinusoidal oscillator and the second one is non-sinusoidal oscillators. Sinusoidal oscillator means it can generate a sine wave. It can generate a sine wave. Non-sinusoidal oscillator means it can generate a square wave or triangular wave a square wave or triangular wave so square wave generator triangular wave generators are non sinusoidal oscillator so this uh, classifications this classification is based on the type of waveform which we get at the output the next classification is based on circuit components which kind of component we are using in the circuit and basically based on circuit component means which kind of component we are going to use in the feedback network since i have already mentioned that uh, the oscillators is having two parts two modules the first one is amplifier and the second one is feedback network amplifier it consists of transistors that is an active element and the feedback network it consists of passive elements like resistor capacitor and inductor right so if the feedback network is made up of resistor and capacitor then that oscillator is called rc oscillator if the feedback network is made up of inductor and uh, capacitor that oscillator is called lc oscillator and there is one uh, different oscillator that is called crystal oscillator this crystal oscillator is made up of crystal one of the example of most popular crystal is quartz and this crystal oscillator it generates a single frequency and it is especially used in microprocessors and microcontrollers because because processor and controllers works on single frequency right but in rc and lc oscillators we can vary the frequency by varying the by varying the values of the components like resistor capacitor and inductor so we can vary the frequency in rc and lc oscillator but in crystal oscillators it generates fixed frequency signals it generates single frequency right so in rc oscillators there are two main categories the first one is wien bridge oscillator and the second one is phase shift oscillator so in wien bridge and phase shift in both the oscillators the feedback network is made up of uh, resistor and capacitor in lc oscillators there are three types of lc oscillators mainly three types the first one is Colpitts oscillator and the second one is Hartley oscillator and the third one is Clap oscillator. So in all these oscillators the feedback network is made up of inductor and capacitor and we use tank circuit concept uh, in that uh, one inductor and one capacitor are connected in parallel right so this uh, classification is based on circuit components third classification is based on the range of operating frequency means uh, which uh, frequency can be generated which range of frequency can be generated uh, from a particular oscillator the first one is low frequency or audio frequency oscillator the frequency range of such oscillators uh, 
are 20 hertz to 200 kilohertz and the example of low frequency or audio frequency oscillators are RC oscillators. RC oscillators uh, fall into the category of low frequency or audio frequency. RC means wind ridge and phase shift oscillator. And the another one is high frequency or radio frequency oscillator and the frequency range of high frequency or radio frequency oscillator is 200 kilohertz to few gigahertz and the example is uh, LC oscillators. We use LC oscillators at high frequency because in LC oscillator there is an inductor and we do not use inductor at low frequency. The reason is that the impedance of inductor XL is equal to SL. Now what will be L? It will be XL upon S. S equal to j omega. So, at low frequency, the size of the inductor increases. So, the circuit becomes very bulky, very large. So, we avoid using inductors at low frequency. Inductors are used at high frequency, right. So, for high frequency applications, we use LC oscillators. For low frequency, RC oscillators are preferred. Another classification is based on whether the feedback is used or not. Like I have already mentioned that uh, in oscillators, we use positive feedback, we use positive feedback. So, in analog circuit subject, as per the syllabus, we need to only study feedback type of oscillators right now. Feedback type of oscillators means like in RC, wind bridge and phase shift and in LC, culprits and heart lake oscillators are the main topics, fine. So, feedback type of oscillator means the oscillator which is having feedback, for example, wind bridge, phase shift, culprit and Hartley are feedback type of oscillator. Non-feedback type of oscillators means there is no feedback and the example of uh, non-feedback type of oscillator is UJT, relaxation oscillator, UJT that stands for uh, unijunction transistor. Basically, non-feedback type of oscillators, it utilizes negative resistance region. And uh, by the utilization of negative resistance uh, reason, such uh, oscillators generate signals. But here, we need to focus on feedback type of oscillators only. So, this is the reference. And uh, in this class, uh, I have discussed the basics of oscillators, classifications of oscillators, Bach-Hussein criteria and how oscillator generates output without giving any input.